This is Access 2019, Modules 6 and 7, Part 1, Creating a Form in Design View. So we're going to be doing this in our Lakewood database. This is the database that we used in Modules 1, 2, and 3. So there's a few things that you need to understand as far as if you look on the Create tab, there are many different buttons that you can start your forms and reports, and they will start you in different places. So to start a form in Design View, we're going to actually use this Form Design button. The forms that we've used creating our wizard will all be changed based on the screen resolution. So the way the screen looks, or the form looks on the screen, will change based on this resolution. There is a technique called anchoring, which you can use to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of our forms. Open up this visit data. And if I go to the layout view, and then I go to the arrange tab, you'll see that you can anchor these items to different spots on the screen to help crea create a screen that will look, or a form that will look the same no matter the resolution that you are using. The book does go over more details about using this anchoring feature. We won't be using it in K201, but it is available should you need to be working in an environment with monitors of different resolutions. I'm going to close the visiting data form. All right, so we're going to start out working with Design View and create a form from Design. We will use three different types of an item called a control. A control is anything that you add to a form. If it's a bound control, it means it is adding something that is connected to a piece of data in one of the tables. So if I go to the Design tab and I choose Add Existing Fields, I can then say Show Me All the Tables, and we're going to be adding fields from our billing table. So I'm going to click the plus next to billing, and then I'm going to double click on the fields in the order I want them to be added. So I'm going to start with the visit ID. You see it adds a text box that is currently highlighted. The text box will display the values that are in the field. It is also adding a bound control which is the label box. The label box will either contain the field name or the caption if there is a caption that was entered. So we can keep adding fields. The second field we're going to add is an invoice number, followed by the fields in the order that they're listed. So we'll do the invoice date, amount, item, and finally paid. Once we've added all of our fields, we can go ahead and close the field list. And then we're going to save our form because we're not using a wizard. We do have to save the object. So we'll click save and we'll call this billing data. So each of these label boxes contain either the caption or the field name if there is no caption. The boxes that have the actual field name listed in them 
those are going to contain the data that is in that field. The label boxes are your bound controls. So if I want to move fields, I can click on the label box, hold the shift key down and click on the text box. In this case, it's the check mark for the yes or no field. And then I can drag them where I want to put them. So you get the cross with the arrows and you're going to drag these. We want to put it next to the invoice number field. We don't have to worry about if it's exactly lined up because we can then hold the shift key down and select the invoice number, text box, and label box. And then you can do a right click and choose to align. You want to be careful that you don't align left or right because it'll stack everything on top of each other, but you could align the top or the bottom. So we're going to align the top and it will line up all of those four items so that they are in the same line. If we want to resize a field, we think that this field box is not large enough because we feel that some of our invoice items will be larger than it will fit there. So we can grab a corner button or one of these side arrows. These little buttons are called resizing arrows. When you hover over them and you get the arrow, then you can drag it down and it will enlarge that item. If you want to delete either a label box or a text box, if you click on the label box and choose to right click and then delete, you'll notice it only deletes the label. It does not delete the text box along with it. So if you want to delete one without the other, that's what you would do. If we undo that, if we click on the actual text box and do a right click and choose delete, it will delete both the text and the bound control that was with it. We're going to go ahead and leave that deleted. <coughs> Excuse me. An unbound control is an item that is not directly connected to data in a table. So it would include things like your title or your logo, perhaps a label that we've seen before. We're going to start out by adding a title. So when we click on title, it adds a form header. And if I scroll down, you'll notice it also added a form footer at the same time. We're going to change the name of this so that the title reads Billings. And then we can go ahead and highlight that text and we will go over to our format tab. And we'll use the font color of dark red and we'll make it bold. When you're done editing, you can click away from it in that title area or in the header area to finish it. Let's say we wanted to add a logo. We go back to our design tab and we choose the logo button. We're going to locate our logo, which I have stored in my C drive under Sam, or excuse me, under my um, IUPUI folder and then under the K201 folder. You'll notice we have access, access modules, and I have a image. You'll notice the dotted lines are connecting the title as well as the logo. So if I want to move the logo to the right hand side, I'm going to right click on the picture 
And under layout, I'm going to remove the layout. That separates each item in my header. I'm going to go ahead and first of all shrink down the size of the title box. Then I'm going to click on the logo and I'm going to drag that over to the right hand side. We can also enlarge it. But you do have to remove the layout before you can try to move that logo. Let's say they asked us to add a label into the footer. So we would come up here into our controls group and click on the label button. Then scroll down. Oops, I didn't mean to add one there. I'm going to delete that label that I started to add. All right. Try this again. We'd click on the label button, then scroll down and draw out the shape of the label that we want in the footer. Then we would say prepared by and your name, whatever text you wanted in that label. If you wanted to format the color or the style, you could highlight the text, go over to the format group. Maybe we want to enlarge the size of it. We could make it bold and that dark red. And then click away from it to finish it. Those items that we just added were unbound controls. They kind of stand on their own. They're not connected to any physical data in the database. The last item we can add is a calculated control. So a calculated control allows us to create a new field that's going to be a calculation. So to do that, we're going to go to the Design tab. We're going to come over here and locate the button that says text box. We're going to draw out the shape of a text box and you'll notice unlike the label that added one box, the text box adds two. It adds the box for the text which will be where the sum will be and then it gives us a label box that we can put a description of what the user is looking at. All right, so now that we have our text box, we're going to come up here to the property sheet. We're going to enter some information about this in this property sheet. So the name of this text box is going to be TXT Invoice AMT Sum. Under the control source, we're going to put the formula. So we're going to say it equals the sum of the invoice AMT field. Close the bracket. We can also specify formatting for the number formatting. We're going to say that we want this to be currency with two decimal places. Once we're done entering the information on the property sheet, we can go ahead and close that. But the last thing we do need to do is change the label. Right now it says text 11. We want it to say total all invoices. So this would be called a calculated control. So let's go ahead and save these changes to our form. And then let's go ahead and switch to form view so we can look at the end result. Now if you wanted to see how 
to move through the screen. This is called the tab order. So as you're tabbing through the fields, you can see you tab in the order that they were added. If I wanted to tab instead so that it went from the invoice number to whether it's paid or not, and then continued down the form, I can change the tab order in order to do that. So we're going to go ahead and switch to the design view. And we're going to choose this button here under the tools group called tab order. You're going to want to move the invoice paid field so that it is below invoice number. So you click on it once when you see the long arrow, to highlight it, then click on it a second time and hold the mouse down and you'll see a line, that line you then move to where you want the field to move. When you release the mouse, that will move the field. So now if we say OK, and we go back to our form view, you can see that we can tab and it goes from the invoice number to invoice paid and then down the rest of the screen. So that allows us to change the tab order of our form. And that's as complicated as it is to create a form in design view. And that concludes this video.